Hey everybody, good evening. It is uh, time for a new game at the Adventure Archive. We are playing the uh, newly released, actually it's only available for pre-order right now, I believe. But Ryan and I clearly kickstarted it because we have our Death in Space <laughs> shirts and you know we kickstart everything, or at least Ryan does. But uh, tonight we're doing a zero session, so it's going to be creating some characters for these three people here. And uh, going over some rules. Because I know Ryan already went over it on the on the weekly scroll, but in case you guys didn't catch that, um, and the players obviously as well, we're going to kind of do a little refresher on it. So, um, but before I begin, um, thank you uh, to the Death in Space guys for allowing us to use this amazing soundtrack. I believe every game should have a soundtrack. I'm, spo I'm spoiled by all the, the Free League publications and all the uh, Stockholm Cartel guys. Um, but this one is composed by uh, Helium Kid Cannon and Solar Fields, and there's actually going to be a second soundtrack coming out soon. So um, not only this one here, and it's completely free, so you don't need to go buy it. Go check it out. It's on all the streaming services. It's kind of a cool, uh, you know, gritty, dark, ambient, very reminiscent of, of the, uh, or applicable to this to the setting. So what do we got going on we got jess here we got ryan who's off camera but he's here we got ducky as usual so um we are we're uh flying one short than usual so uh we'll see how that goes three players not quite sure how uh brutal this is gonna be i've never even tried to do any kind of like combat simulations or anything but uh maybe we'll we'll see once we uh once we roll up some characters and see what these ability scores are looking like because like many uh of the offerings in the in the you know quote unquote osr this is a roll down the list there is no standard array um there's no re-rolls there's no take the best of this it's just you get what you get so all right well uh who else we gotta thank oh of course mcglintlock who uh we're running foundry as you all know um or i run foundry all the time now and uh he created the uh the foundry system for death in space so huge thanks to him go check him out he's got a really cool uh patreon with a bunch of roll tables mostly dark fantasy but he alerted me to the fact that he does have a roll table for death in space i believe right now it's for just rolling uh ship names so in this game which we'll talk about uh you get what's called a hub it can either be a spacecraft if you want to play a campaign that you know has you uh traveling throughout the star system or uh, something like a, <laughs> a shitty uh, mini space station that kind of chugs along. So, and I think those can those can offer different kinds of um, game sessions. So, we'll talk about that more. But I think that's all we have to th all the people we have to thank. Of course, thank you to the musicians for providing the soundtrack. Is it makes my life easier. I don't have to go dig up uh, custom stuff. So, as far as how you guys can support the players. Um, we're just going to use blesses and banes in this one. There's some really cool uh, rules which we'll talk about um, called vo void points, but um, they're kind of like omens in a way. I mean, you accrue them differently and they, they work differently, but uh, it's kind of like that extra little bonus you get for a character. So not going to be buying those because those are pretty easy to get. Uh, but you'll notice the uh, the white triangle in the, in the bottom left-hand corner of their... That's going to represent how many blesses they have. I have the red triangle, which is how many banes. So if you guys ever want to do that, it operates the same way. It's just going to be a 1d4 plus an ability check or an attack roll. This is a d20 based system. Um, so very familiar to everybody. But so what is death in space? What is this game? So I thought it was going to be kind of um, space horror, which it can be. There is this thing called the void that is kind of a... Uh, bringing the universe to an inevitable collapse and uh there are mutated things there's also void corruption where this thing actually mutates you and there's cosmic mutations and all kinds of cool space horror things like that but i think at its heart it's um you play characters who were just trying to survive in this very just derelict system there's um everything is run down rusted breaking repurposed it's not a sci-fi uh, setting where everything is clean and polished and brand new and high tech and, you know, uh, wireless. Like if you want to hack into something, you have to literally jack into it physically. It's not. So it's a very uh, 
kind of alien vibe, I guess you could picture it that way. Whereas even like the um, like the film where a lot of the people, a lot of the uh, player characters are just like mechanics or chemists or things like that. They're not like space warriors. They're, you can be a bounty hunter, of course, and we'll talk about that when we get more into the uh, the roles and stuff. But um, that's kind of the gist of it. So these guys are just trying to sort of make their way in this this uh, uh, collapsing universe. Um, Kind of like Burkborg in a way, where the, the world is inevitably ending um, and you're just trying to sort of eke out a, some kind of existence before everything falls apart. But uh, let us move on. Players, you guys have any questions? I know, Ryan, you've, you guys have already did a very in-depth review of this book, but Jess and Ducky. You did, yeah. Um, any, and if you want to check that out, Go check out our YouTube where we did the entire thing this past Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I actually finally put the podcast out as well. Nice. Yeah. So if you'd like a deep dive, probably a deeper dive than we're going to go into, uh, check it out. You go deep. <laughs> really get in there, you know? Yeah. Wouldn't have it any other way. All right. So, um, so Jess and Ducky, any questions, any concerns, anything you want to ask before we, we dive right into this thing? I'm going to be toggling between uh, the PDF, which I, which you guys see here, uh, and the uh, the Foundry screen, so you can witness uh, what these guys are rolling up. And let's click on the uh, the amazingly hyperlinked PDF, straight to character creation. Oh, oh, hyperlinked, bookmarks. Bookmarks. It even it even hyperlinks the inline page references and has an entire hyperlinked separate index for all of the tables yeah beautiful man mm. I, I think mm. you're i think you're you're oh. really you're really putting your mark making your mark on the uh hey. RPG space <laughs> johan friend of the show johan nor who you may know from Merkborg and cyborg uh messaged me about cyborg and said hey just so you know i thought about you when i was hyperlinking this 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 uh pdf and i was like my legacy continues yeah i die yeah. and what you all get is hyperlinked pdf <laughs> Hey, that's not. You're that's, welcome. That's not a bad legacy to leave behind. I mean, I think. Hey, people listen. will always. That, that's that's one great way to be remembered. I think. Okay, so character creation. Let's dig right in. I'm sorry, I didn't allow Jess or Ducky to speak. Did you guys have anything? <laughs> nah, I'm yeah. just excited. <laughs> okay. All right, and I think um, once we once we work as we work our way through the book and, and start creating characters. You guys will have a better sense of, of sort of the tone of this game and because I know you guys are both coming into it completely blind. Brian's the only one who knows anything about it. Um, so step by step, here we go. The first thing you guys are going to do is roll your abilities. But what are those abilities? So uh, Merkborg has three. I know like, I'm going to keep probably comparing this to Merkborg because it's sort of similar. But this system has four. There's body, which is, you know, your strength, physical resistance is what you use for melee attacks. Uh, dexterity, which is obvious, reflexes, poison speed. Your savvy, this is the uh, kind of your presence in a way for Merkborg. So it's perception, intuition, psychological resistance, but also piloting spacecraft. And finally, tech, which is um, using that technology, but also uh, range attacks. So uh, we're not rolling any D6s tonight, though. What we're going to do is... Uh, have each player roll a uh, 2d4. You can roll them one at a time, and then uh, the the ability score is actually the first roll minus the second roll. So it's gonna be kind of interesting. So rather than sort of uh, rolling 3d6 and that sort of creates a modifier, you're actually creating the modifier with the dice. So there's no like conversion table or anything. So. Let me switch over to Foundry so we can see these dice roll. Do we is there like a build as you go character sheet or should we just write all this down and then add it? Oh, all you guys have, to have one. Sheets. So check over in the uh, yeah. You guys should be set up if you if you check in the character area and double click on your uh, token. There should be a character sheet that pops right up. Look at that. Popping up. Look at that. Courtesy of McGlintlock. It looks nice. Yeah, it's a nice, and nice like fucking did a good job. Portrait drop in. Mm. Yeah, character art and everything. All right, let's get this. Got to get my uh, roll twenty pro to expire, and I'm on the foundry. 
Or you can just move on to Foundry and let it expire. Probably not. <laughs> okay, so um, let's do it, guys. Uh, who wants to? Do you want to do this one by one to to, view, uh, to avoid any confusion or what? All right, Jess. So um, why don't you roll me a D4 and then a D4, and then take the uh, the first one and then you subtract the second roll. Okay, so your first roll was what? A one. Uh, so it's a plus one then. One and a two. Yeah, I guess you could just do the two D four because it it does it in order. Yeah, you can. Well, you can twirl down like I did in Foundry right here. You can see uh, what the actual results are too if you yeah. click on that. So okay. You, you subtract the second, the first one from the second one. Correct. Oh, the second one from the first one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was it? Isn't it? Oh. The ability is the first roll minus the second. So it's a minus one. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Negative. Minus one for body. Yeah. All right. Give me a give me a, give me me a a dex roll. Do another 2d4. Okay. So you got a two and a four. A two. Right? Minus two. Minus two. Wait, what the hell? Oh, okay, okay. God damn it. I hate this game already. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, one more? Uh, Actually, two more. So do it. Okay. That's your dexterity. So this one will be uh, one minus... Oh, three. Four okay. minus one, you get a three. There you go. Plus the three. So you're you savvy. Get. Yeah. You're savvy. savvy fuck. So you're you're perceptive. You have great intuition, and you're great at piloting a spacecraft. So you can already see how these are helping craft your character. Ah, son of a bitch! <laughs> you got nothing but but. Woo. You're basically Savvy. Sylvester in this campaign right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Jess, if you double click on your token or click on the uh, character over on the right, you can have access to your character sheet. Oh, I've and I'm you got it up already. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Ryan. Let's see what old Ryan gets here, if it's going to mesh with his uh, right. what he wants to play. 2d4. All right. Let me just copy paste that so I can do it four times. Two. OK, plus two for, body. for strength, for body. Yeah. Two. All right. Minus two. Okay. And that was for deck. So my savvy is zero. Zero. Okay. It's not negative. And my minus two. Cool. 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 So you're you seem to cool. be like a like a, a a tough guy so far, right? Tough like guy. Strength. Tough guy. All I got is strength. <laughs> Literally, my only positive is strength, is body. Jess is a savvy. So, Ducky, you got to come in with some uh, with some tech or, or dex here, buddy. Zero across the board. <laughs> yep. All right, Ducky, you're up. Let's see what your body is going to be like. So, 2d4? <laughs> 2d4. I can't see my rolls. Zero. Can't see your. Did roles. you pop out your? Is your is the page on the right side of Foundry like folded in? Um, I can see like the right. I just couldn't see y'all like your roles either, or like really? anyone's roles. Yeah. Can you see the roll table? I can see the roll table. Um, it's not the dice. Just not. Well, it's not the numbers aren't showing up on the right either. Like I just rolled two d four, but it didn't show up for me. But you I can see it on the stream. Oh, weird. Okay, you got a two and a oh, two, weird. so it's a zero. I wonder if there's something to do with permissions. Let me see. That's weird how you can't see it. You may want to try to refresh or something too, like. Okay. Just uh, as a let me see what you got. Owner default. Yeah, I mean. Okay, refreshing seems to work. Oh, you got All it. Right, cool. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Okay. So so far, body is at zero. Let's do your dexterity next. Okay. So that would be. So you got a one. You got. 
So a two plus two? Yes. Zero, right? Three and a three. One. Okay. That's not bad. That's kind of what we needed, right? Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. See, we're already the, balancing the, the party. I, I guess. Go. What are the stats roll down? What did he get? Uh, so zero body, two decks, zero savvy, and one tech. Oh, nice. Look at us. No negatives. A regular crew. A regular crew. And I, I'd like to talk about that, and we'll, we'll get into more in depth. It's kind of how initiative works in this game, but really, and, and we'll talk, we'll, I think when we do combat and stuff, I'll probably allow a little bit more meta stuff, because the way they try to have you play this is collaboratively, right? You guys are a crew. You move, you, you, you work together, you operate together, and that is your strength, right? Your crew is your family in this game, and so... Um, once we talk about initiative and stuff, that'll make more sense, but all right. Well, we got the stats already uh, Next is origin. So like I said, this is a roll table. Let me switch it on the uh, the stream really quick um, But I know Ryan has something he wants to do Already so oh, I just had two favorites. Yeah two favorites. Okay Yeah, now and that you have your ability the... scores. Does, does anything feel a little bit more? appropriate I mean, here's the thing. It's not like there's really spell casting. So I think the things that you decide to do are, are a little bit up to you. But yeah. um, we can roll, and that's totally fine. I'm down to roll two. My favorite, though, are the Velocity Cursed and the Void. OK. Um, the Void is basically like a Void Space Shaman. Um, so obviously, like the edge lord douche of the thing, which <laughs> there we this go. Guy, um and uh we need we need another the, uh Nifel, right? Yeah, I mean he's going to he's going to spiritually grackle. carry through every yeah. game. There you go. Um and then the velocity cursed is awesome. Ill-fated ones that have started to lose their connection to reality, they shift and flicker in and out of space-time with glitching faces. And like one of the cuz you get to pick one of these right. two things, right. a future memory. You've already been here once per session. Ask the referee for directions or the pocket world. You start with a portable non fizz server housing a virtual reality where you store memories to connect the past and future of your life. Up to 10 users can connect simultaneously. That's I can cool. only assume that's like it, it, it makes it feel like um, uh, Slaughterhouse Five, but in space. Uh, you can like see memories throughout like your future and past life and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody on stream, Ryan Ryan briefly mentioned it, but the way the origin works is uh, you either roll it or you choose one, and then you get one of two abilities that are listed below that. So whereas a lot of games are, you know, you pick a class. Uh, this is kind of classless, but I feel like it's building a class somewhat as you go versus like Merkborg where, you know, you are what you own essentially. I think it has a little bit more depth than that. So it's kind of a cool take on character creation so um jess what are you gonna do are you gonna roll are you gonna pick something we have um what is it six so well, i mean we could also all roll those are just my favorites if we all decide we want to roll we can just see what the fuck happens yeah you never but know that's up to you i mean i think i will roll Okay. But I don't care. Whatever you want to be, right? I'll tell you what. If you guys, you guys can roll, and if you absolutely hate it, just roll again. I guess. Okay. So it's going to be a uh, d6. So Jess is going to be a velocity cursed. Oh man, that's the one. That, that was uh, one. Of what that's Ryan the one Ryan was talking about. So the one I that did. Kind I of... said they were my favorites. Not that I necessarily wanted it. It's a cool <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. You get to be a glitch, glitched out face. Yeah. Does my savvy kind of like make sense with it? There's not. So again, when we go through character creations, this is, it's classless. So you really only get like the rest of the stuff is pretty much like your traits, your drives, um, your like your looks, your allegiances and hit points and stuff like that. 
So your stats really only feed into what you want to do narratively in the game. It doesn't really the origin, and and the origin gives you like a like a little a little tiny feature you get, and that's about it. Okay. That's what you get as a character. So it's more about how you can make savvy fit velocity curse, not the velocity curse will fit your stats. So any of them can fit any of them. It's just how you decide to like play yep. that character exactly. since it's pretty classless. Okay. So do you want to uh, stick with the velocity curse, or do you want to try to roll again? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. All right, Ryan. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna pick or are you gonna roll? Oh, I'll roll. All right. Let's see what we got. We got a D six. D six. What? <laughs> Did you get the same thing? Uh, yeah. I'll just roll again. We can okay. roll Ducky, off. you roll. You want to roll off? No, it's okay. No, no, you got it. We, we're going in I'm order. We're better. going in order. We're going in order. I'm gonna roll up because sounds kind of fun. Man, your Ooh. dice, I can't even see the number on it. It's weird. So you got two. It's you just got like a thing. Oh. But Ducky already rolled a two. Oh, I rolled prematurely. So Oh no, it's okay. Ahead, it. oh. It's okay. Oh, you didn't want the you didn't want that roll, you mean? You just accidentally I, rolled? Yeah, I accidentally rolled. I don't mind either way. So a chrome what? is an ancient AI placed in a body vessel of organic material part machine but with an organic CPU and distributed neural system that requires oxygen. Okay, so you're, you're, you're basically like a homunculus kind of thing, sci-fi. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, like um, who does that? Is it, uh, I guess it's Midgard that has like the, the, the oh, they're yeah. not Warforged. Warforged. Remember what you were? I was yeah, it's like a soul yeah. inside a metal body. That's what this feels like to me. Yeah. The Warforged. So is that, you want to stick with that or you want to roll again? You guys are so far um, very like synthetic kind of feeling, you know, if if that's the way you want to go, but. Let's see what Ducky gets and then I'll make a decision. Okay. All right, Ducky, why don't you. Four. Four. Soul pod. Ooh. So that is the solo pod, soul pod. Hibernating for decades, only staying awake for short periods, they dedicate their lives to the scientific study of slow cosmic phenomena. Sounds about accurate. <laughs> it sounds kind of like, um, I don't know, kind of kind of reminiscent of Abe a little bit, I guess. Right? I was going to say, that gives me Abe vibes. Yeah. yeah. I'll keep it. I just like that basically, what it sounds like to me is like basically you like you wake up and you do like all your research stuff and then you go to sleep for like, a couple hundred years when you wake up again you're like how has the universe changed let me check it out so yeah so very different uh rp uh possibilities there okay so ryan or do you want to stick with your ai uh, again so you got one no which is basically just our human i'll go with the chrome and i i'm body i think i'm the body guy anyway right so i'm um so yeah so i'll go chrome i'm the ancient ai in a in a organic body vessel well so wait it's a vessel of organic material so am i kind of like a soul inside like um yeah. like, the like david from like alien uh, yeah i mean i guess yeah you're an ai in a in an organic so i mean you look you probably look human you don't necessarily need Our to machine. look like a cyborg if you don't want it's up to you though however you want to look right. yeah but yeah i mean yeah you could be like david essentially but um I just won't Ancient blink AI. for the rest of the campaign. Just <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I guess we have our origins. Is everybody uh, okay with us? No. Okay. That'd be cruel. Interesting. All right. So let us move on to uh, character details. So this is um, the background drive, or sorry, the background trait drive and looks. Um, again, roll tables abundant. So if you guys want to roll and see what your background is, go for it. And if it doesn't feel like it's, you know, gelling with, with your, you know, your origin, then that's cool. We can do it again. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, well, well, also though, are we gonna pick our, our uh, one of our benefit? Uh, we get one of the two, Oh right? yeah, shit, sorry guys. We, yeah, see? We got to go back and choose. Uh, you get one of the two um, benefits. So for 
Ryan, it's either a native machine you can converse with computers as if they were real people. That's pretty fucking cool. Plug in and find a friend. Body battery, you can use your body to power one small electrical device such as a handheld item. Yeah, I'm going to go with the native machine yeah, because I don't want to just cool. be everyone's fucking cell phone charger. <laughs> Okay, uh, Jess, um, Future Memory or Pocket World? So basically, uh, you, if you, Future Memory is once per session, you can ask me for directions. So like if you want to know maybe where something is, you get that uh, once per session though. That's sort of like a freebie. Otherwise, um, you have a non fizz server housing a virtual reality where you store memories to connect to the past and future of your life. Up to 10 users can communicate or connect. So I feel like that would be used for like RP narrative stuff, seems like. Hmm. Yeah, I think they'll do future memory. Okay. And then Ducky as the uh, soul pod. So you're either long lived or old tech. Um, so you have an old and useful contact in every port. Or you have a portable hibernation pod. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to go with long-lived. Long-lived, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, regenerates lost limbs, prevents aging, and the need to eat. Powered by starlight. That's pretty cool, too. Oh my god, it is Abe. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> okay. Free egg. Free egg. <laughs> so you're going to stick with long-lived? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes a lot of sense with the uh, the origin. So, okay. Character details. We're going to start with background. I think, Jess, you already rolled and you got a 16. Asteroid archaeologist? How does that sound? Uh, fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> You're like, I guess. All right. Ryan and Ducky, do you want to roll a d20 and see what a back what background you got? 18 is a star salvager. Okay. And Ducky would be a monolith cultist. See, this is what I'm saying. Like that, that, that kind of leans in more to the void a little bit. But yeah. I guess everyone can be a cultist. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think too, like sometimes having these. Uh, seemingly contradictory attributes can make an interesting character. It's kind of like why I wanted to make uh, Tolman, you know? Like, basically, yeah. what was de designated as a warrior, but make him a bard kind of thing, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I'm i sad that we never got to finish that one. Tolman yeah. was a cool character. I know. Love to bring him back. Okay, so, uh, if everybody's cool with that, we will move on to your traits. So these are more, yeah, these are just personality traits, how you will kind of help you RP in uh, confrontations and stuff. So let's get some uh, D20, D20 rolls in here. Light. I wish Ryan would have got that. Yeah, that would have. Uh... I am relentless. <laughs> relentless. <laughs> and then Ducky, uh, inventive. Okay. Sense. I was hoping for 20. <laughs> 20? Too old for this Too old. Shit. That's what I'm saying. That's so good for the solo pod. Uh. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, because you're like, yeah, you're just over everything because you've lived for hundreds of years. So is everybody cool with, uh, with that? All right, yeah, makes sense so far. Let's talk about your drive. So, uh, what is what is uh, keeping you going? What is your motivation in this life, apart from survival, I guess? And making some hollows, getting some contracts. So, fifteen for Jess um, to never be alone. Ah, that's why I'm so polite. Yeah, see, that works. And then Ducky got a two, a person. Hmm. Okay. 
So again, one thing I'd like to mention about this game too is it's very it's it's somewhat collaborative storytelling. So um, you guys, for instance, need to come up with uh, why you guys are together. Like what? Why did you guys band together as a crew? Um, when we get to the hub creation part, it'll be a lot about um, what is it? You guys have full control over what it looks like. You know, any kind of personal details or um, information about it. So, and, and, and actually while we're running the game or when I'm running the game, there may be some situations where I ask you to help sort of, you know, collaborative, collaboratively build the world and maybe who your past contacts were and how you know certain people and stuff like that. So that, that definitely uh, encourages, this game encourages that kind of uh, playing. So, all right, are we set on our, our drive? What did you get, Ryan? You got yeah, a seven? Harmony. Harmony. Which... But you're it's relent literally you're probably you're relentless? the only yeah the only one on here that I think would be one that I wouldn't really pick. Literally the only one. Okay, we'll roll again. It's fine. Yeah, I'm I could see that, that being an interesting conflict between someone who's relentless, but I, I'm I'm har I that harmoniously a lot more, relentless. This one, this one sounds a lot more uh, to always on, be right. Oh my god! See, you need to you need to get some stuff where well, you're going to get out of your yeah. comfort zone. <laughs> Yeah, we'll make characters and then we'll just rotate them. We'll just like pass them off to the other people. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. So we are moving on. We have our drives. Let's move on to uh, details. So how do you guys look? It is going to be a D20. But also, What's also up? this next like schematic art piece. Yeah, is ridiculous. It's so good. Yeah, it's like a wireframe of a 3D model. Yeah, it's cool. And it's spread. I don't have the full spread on here, but you can see part of it going across the... Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, amazing design in this book. Very usable, too, though. It's not just uh, for show. So do we get any... Uh, you guys want to roll some D20 to see how you look? Yeah, L2, you got to you got to pick this one up, man. It's uh it's a beautiful beautiful book. I mean, I know you've probably seen it on the uh the weekly scroll already. Bags and pockets everywhere, but nothing important in them. <laughs> nice. So you're like a Rob Leefield character. For those comic book fans out there, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, uh, Ryan got a th uh, three. Wait, I got. Wait, why don't I see these rolls? Foreign realistic tattoos. No, I got thirteen. Oh. Oh, Ducky, you got thirteen too. Yeah. We can compare oh, scars. You. <laughs> so I got, and I roll all of my stuff. So I got thirteen bullet holes, uh, four scars from let's say four slashes, four slash scars, and one metal fragment. Probably got more than one of those. Yeah. So it's interesting because like, I, I think like you being this relentless, always be right guy. Probably got yours from lot. yeah, exactly. You probably got yours from confrontational stuff. Whereas Ducky, he's been alive for so long. Maybe he's like acquired all of these things over his uh, very yeah. long life in a different manner. So interesting. Do you want to keep that Ducky, holes. or do you want to roll again? Oh, I'll keep it. Okay. All right. Now we know how everybody looks. Um, now we're gonna do a past allegiance. So some still wear their war uniforms while others. Do all they can to forget. Roll or decide your allegiance during the gem war. So I forgot to mention about the gem war. It's kind of a the world building aspect or the the setting info. But the gem war was this this massive war to find these gems, and these gems were uh, allowed uh, or uh, civilization to create uh, high tech weapons, high tech ships, um, faster than light travel, opening up wormholes and stuff. And so everybody was fighting over this uh, resource, and eventually. The war came to a uh, a crushing halt, and uh, ten years ago, I believe, right? And um, but everybody still, because it was so recent that it ended, 
they have memories of this. They maybe even fought in this war. And so everybody's kind of stranded in this tenebrous system uh, in a way where um, without technology. So everything like no new ships are made. No new weapons are made. Everything is sort of reassembled from things that already exist. And um, that's kind of the iron ring, which is this giant spaceship ring, kind of, that uh, is orbiting, I think it's Inaro, right? A dead gas giant or something like that, if I remember right. Oh, Inaro's the moon of a death ga gas giant. Oh, that's giant. right. It's but the yeah, moon. I think, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so did you guys already, uh, Jess rolled. You got a one, mm -hmm. an idea. You held some value, faith, science, or something else higher than war and strife. You made compromises, but kept away from fighting. Okay. So you were basically a deserter, kind of. You're like hiding from all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Ryan also got a one. You gonna roll again? Yeah, that just doesn't... I don't feel like that fits the character by any stretch of the imagination. Not with all my bullet scars. Come on. Yeah, exactly. That That is very... Unless you have They're a different story back. on how you got those scars, you know? So three nope. is... I'm on the winning side because <laughs> I am always right. I chose the right side in the beginning, obviously. But in the end, did you really win? That is the question. Yes. Yes? Okay. I did. That's what I figured. But see, one thing, like, don't, and you guys, don't be afraid to roll things or pick things that don't quite fit because that could lead to some interesting character stuff. So, uh, Ducky, you got a five. The contract, as an opportunist, you swore allegiance to those who paid best. Explains the cult. Okay. Okay. Now, well, you got to decide, are you really in the cult? Or yeah, you, you just, might be like, posing as a cult. Doing it so long, yeah. They paid you well, and you're like, "All right, I'm in your cult. That's that's cool." Maybe maybe they were worshiping you for a long time, and then you woke up and were like, "Oh, cool." Oh shit! Thank God now. See uh, all these cool like. Uh, that's why I love roll tables so much because you you're gonna come up with some you start connecting the dots, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Come up with a completely unique character. All right, so hit points. What do you got there? Oh, let's start a cult. Oh, it just says, let's start a cult. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is where we're going to decide how tough these guys are in terms of uh, getting hit and shot. So it's only a 1d8. That's it. There's no modifiers whatsoever. But when you do rest, you recover 1d8 plus body hit points. So, uh, so are we are we taking any what we roll no matter what? Yep. Let's let's say. So again, this isn't this isn't like necessarily a heavy combat game. In fact, um, I don't want to. Nah, eh, I won't say anything. But uh, all right. So Ducky got. Oh no, Jess got four. Okay, you have four hit points. Where do we put hit points? Um, let me see in your character sheet. Oh wait, situation. It's under uh, personal. It's in the center column at the very bottom. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what else we got? Ducky got a three. Ryan got a seven. Are you happy with that, Ryan? I'm the tank, obviously. <laughs> so I didn't get these bullet holes for nothing. Okay. And then, um, so defense defense rating, that's the last thing I believe. So um, it's basically how well you can avoid damage and how that is calculated is it is your unarmored defense or your unarmored defense rating is a 12 modified by your dexterity. And then if you get armor, obviously you can increase that. So I have a minus two again. Why I have so many bullet holes? Okay, so your your uh, defense rating is ten. Okay, I think so. It's I mean it's twelve plus dex, and I have a minus two, so that would take me to a ten, yep, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, I believe that concludes character creation. So let's uh, let's do a quick roundtable.
Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Sorry. Starting gear and starting bonus. After this, we'll do a round table and, and get a, a good picture of, of who we got here. All right, so savings. Hollows are the most common form of currency. You start with 3d10 spare hollows. So why don't you guys each roll 3d10? And if you guys, uh, if you click on the bottom right, the die, it'll keep adding it up. So if you tie, if you like click these six, three times or, you know, it'll, there you go. Eighteen, seventeen, and then Jess. How many hollows do you have? Spare hollows. What do I do? 3d10? Yeah, 3d10. Oh. 23. It's because you're so polite. Yes. So polite. All right. Um, next up is item slots. So like very, like pretty much all of us are games. You can only carry so many things. It's, it's encumbrance. Um, it's a little bit more unforgiving, I feel like, uh, because you have 12 plus your body score item slots. So what do you guys got? I think, Ryan, you have like a plus two in strength, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you so I have 14, 14 slots. slots. Yeah. Oh, and it's already added in. Cool. 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 Yeah. On the so, belongings tab, number three. Yeah. yeah. And then normal items take up one slot. Small items do not require any slot, whereas heavier unwieldy items can take up two or more slots. And I believe uh, in the equipment uh, tables, it, it shows that stuff. So I'm not going to be too, you know, I know Merkborg is kind of didn't have specificity like that. So like with scrolls, for instance, you know. It's like a piece of parchment, but it takes up a slot. So if you guys have smaller items and stuff, um, it won't count. Um, and then let's do your starting kit. Starting gear. Uh, roll or choose one of the stall. So you guys can choose one of these if you feel like they fit your character more, or you can roll and just um, see what comes. So we have the Prospector, Ring Thug, Mercenary, Nomad, Engineer, and Explorer. I just found the packs. All right. You're, let me guess, Ryan. You're either going to be the ring thug or mercenary. That's your guess? I made a two or three? Yeah. Oh, you're rolling? Oh. Engineer. I, were we not? No. You, I mean, Like I said, you guys can choose it or you can roll it. It's up to you. Oh. I think it'd be cool uh, well, if everybody yeah. rolled everything. I think, but yeah. Oh. Electric multi-tool. Electric multi-tool duct tape tablet computer. Fusion welder and workwear. Yeah, you can plug it in for network access. Fusion welder, workwear. Prospector. Handheld material analyzer. Magnetic boots. Breathing mask. Container with engine grease. <laughs> you can make something slippery. I think... I think this is one where I'm gonna go ahead and, and pick one because this is the ones that are like so like specific to like the character type that you want right. to play. So I think mercenary probably is the best because that's what my guy seems like he's been made for. Like he's a star salvager now, but like he was relentless in the gym war on the winning side with a bunch of bullet holes. I feel like he probably was a mercenary during that and took and you know pick probably was on a, a bunch of sides but at the end picked the winning side and declared that he was right as he always is um but i think it makes sense i think the mercenary is what makes sense most for for kind of the direction these stats and everything are going for as opposed to the engineer if i had taken the uh the little ability to charge something then i could just charge my tablet computer all the time but there you go i think that's what makes sense most for him that's what it's, it's kind of seems like it's creating as we go are the okay. packs in uh, 
are the packs in the um uh check the i do not know i did not look oh. but if you check the uh compendium packs up top they might be in there it might be a drag and drop for you guys and then ducky got a four uh nomad liquid purifier hover hammock box of spices pack of incense sticks rechargeable battery with compact solar panel okay are you gonna stick with that one uh yeah okay and then here is what you're talking about ryan your starting bonus if you get a negative um so if the sum <laughs> of your abilities is negative is anybody's negative the sum of your abilities Okay. Nobody wait, else. Wait. Oh yeah, I my the sum of my abilities is minus yeah, let's two. Let's see, two zero. Oh yeah, negative two. So you get to roll a one d six. Oh shit! This is where you could get a weapon or something. Nice. You get a bonus thing to it, yeah. That's cool. Dropping my uh, equipment in real quick. Oh dang, one of them is a crew member. Like you have basically like a poltroon. <gasps> I mean, you better you better roll for that. We went from Brian to poltroon to who? Since we only have three. Yeah, Omega, uh, you do not get like, you do not, that's one thing I noticed about when I was reading this book is you do not get weapons. You can't even afford weapons really when you start, Trim. which yeah. totally picks fits the theme of this thing, where it's, you know, you're not space warriors right off the bat. Dang so it, Jess, I got a pistol. Oh, you got a pistol? Okay. Always trade equipment. Yours was I'll negative two. You my... So you got negative one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yours is very negative. Oh wait, yours is negative two. Just like oh wait, mine. you don't roll for this if it's negative? No, 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 you roll, yeah. Because the sum of your ability scores is negative. Oh, I see, I see. You get it. So, Ryan, you got an AI guard animal. Oh, that sounds cool. That's pretty cool. DR13, 1D4 hit points, and a bite, 1D6. So, a pistol and you got an extra, an extra um, pair of teeth, I guess. Man, that... We could always just swap. I'll take that pistol. You can take my my AI guard animal and continue on with your with your I'm totally like swap. uh what's it called? What am I trying to think of? Familiars. Again, Brian Poltroon and then like your your pet your pet dog animal. Yeah, you guys yeah, I mean they're all your I mean, belongings. You can do you whatever want you want. I'll totally trade you. But yeah. yeah, I'll take a pistol. That fits my guy. Yeah. Okay. You guys yeah. are gonna trade yeah, you your the AI okay. guard animal. Yeah. So now you get to decide um, I, what, what this thing is, uh, Jess. What is this AI guard animal? Is it a derpy Doberman? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a derpy Doberman named Billy. Oh, man. Okay. Artificial intelligence. What did you get? What did you get, Ducky? Ducky can't roll because he's got, he doesn't have a net negative. You're not net negative? No. No. He, his scores are decent. He's got like, what do you got? Uh, he's got uh, a zero, a two, a zero, and a one. Must be nice. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on, everybody. Everyone gets a personal trinket. So again, uh, mechanically, not really anything. More just like something you hold on to. Maybe you... It has some special meaning to you. Maybe it's something you want in a battle, one in a bet, one in a fight. Who knows? And that's going to be a 1d20. Oh. I did not realize that. There's a character creation roll table thing within here, so we could have just been, like, clicking through on the built-in roll tables the whole time as well. Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, here we are at the Except very end. You're kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this was the, uh, this is the last step, everybody. 
So Ryan, you got 17. You got an ancient synthesizer shaped like a gun. <laughs> How about them guns? I love from I, an ancient star system called America. Yeah, and, is this uh, you have a, you I love have like guns? Yeah, but you like to play oh. music, I guess. You have play some. Wait, it's a synthesizer. Oh, you mean like a synthesizer? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I can just be like boo boo yeah. boo boo boo. Shaped like a gun. And um, then uh, Jess, you got a laser disc with your favorite music. Oh, look at that! Yeah. And Ducky got. Um, Oh, you guys got the same thing. Yeah. So you guys are going to be fighting over uh, the music that's playing in the spaceship, basically. <laughs> Ryan, play me a song. <laughs> okay, so um, the last message on this page is uh, this was the last step. Have a nice death in space. So those are our characters. Let's do a, uh, let's do a round table. Let's start with Jess. I can't find it. I can't find some of the um, some of the stuff in here, like the uh, proximity alarm or this ancient synthesizer. I don't know if you see that somewhere. Oh uh, no, I haven't been looking. Where to put it? No, I think like it's, well, I know where to like put it. But, like mechanically, you mean? The, like how it works mechanically? No, or? like you know how you can oh, in the, oh, go to the packs to and drag it over. It yeah. might not be in there. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to ask McGlintlock or look later. Okay, so um, what, what's up next? Let me switch so we can see the character sheets. Oops, wrong one. All right, so we'll start with Jess. Here is her character sheet here. I didn't completely fill it out. <laughs> what? All right, we'll start with Ryan then. Uh, so who am I and what am I doing? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about I got your character sheet up here on, on stream. Okay, so I still have to pick my name. I'll figure that for next time. Um, but my guy is a Chrome. So he is an AI in an organic and a mech body. Uh, he's currently a star salvager, but prior and during the war, he was a mercenary uh who ended up fighting on the winning side one way or another at the end um taking much physical damage in the process um and all he's left with is a pistol and an ancient synthesizer that looks like a gun do you Still think it's willing. gonna be you think it's gonna be so it's gonna be a, a, a like a handgun or do you think it's gonna be like a rifle or what the synthesizer or the yeah the synthesizer is it gonna be like an assault rifle with a keyboard on it or like what or just... oh my god like a keytar <laughs> but it's like an AR <laughs> yeah yeah I but so I so the question then is we'll have to talk about whether I can mix those together and just have like a gun or synthesizer that shoots bullets. Instead of having two separate guns, maybe we'll talk about it. And then I can be like jamming on the guitar, but then like shoot people with it and like have a soundtrack to our combat. <laughs> that sounds pretty rad. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think something like that is probably going to require some money, some modifications, most likely. But. Um... Gotcha. So as of right now, I have a pistol and some type of synthesizer. And yeah, I have you to can decide. decide. What right. like. Yeah, you can decide on that. Okay. I don't think it could be like a little small thing, though, for a gun, for like a pistol. Synthesizer's got to be a decent size, right? Well, I guess we're in the future. It's space. Who gives a shit? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I, I feel like it is probably clunky. Um, it's your notes. Um, what about your, do you have your looks in here? Your portrait? Yeah, you got your looks, allegiance, background. Traits. Ooh. Okay, you got everything. Yeah, and a pistol I just dragged it in is 1d6 damage. Um, it does take ammo, so I'll definitely have to, like, I mean, buy ammo and or be very careful with it. Yep. So that's cool. All right, so uh, let's move on to Ducky. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I'm a soul pod. Uh, which means I've been around for quite a long time. 
Um, I'm long lived. Uh, my traits are inventive, and my drive is a person's. I don't know who yet, um, and I still don't have a name, um, but I'll figure that out. Look wise, I've got zero bullet scars, one slash, and then three metal fragments. Nice. I don't know where those are yet, but uh, <laughs> I'll get creative with it. But uh, yeah. So, is there. I assume a soul pod isn't human. Is that is it ever like is it described somewhere? I think they carbon seems to be a human, right? I feel like you're sort of you're you're uh, you're it's just like transhumanism or something. You're like beyond human, I guess. But no, it doesn't describe it. And that's another thing. Let me let me scroll back up on the PDF, but. You guys can be whatever you want. I believe there's somewhere it says in here where you could be an alien. You could be, uh, there, there's no definitive races in this. So you, you have complete okay. freedom to be whatever you want. And I think that's what's kind of cool about this too is you can, you can very, very, uh, you, can, you can personalize your character immensely in this. There's no, no real rules against it from that yeah. background. So. so yeah, whatever you want. I mean, if you want to be a, a really old human, or if you want to be some kind of alien creature, or if you want to be whatever. Okay, so um, do you have your stuff in there yet, Jess, in your character sheet? Uh, yeah, most of it. All right, let's take a look. So I'm a savvy velocity cursed. Oh, you got to add that in your, uh, here, I'll do it. And what? Oh. The, your uh, origin. Oh. There we go. Uh, with future memory. I'm also a asteroid archaeologist, apparently. Uh, very polite one, though. And kind of like religious, believe in a higher power. Not about war or strife, which kind of makes sense with my character. Uh, you know what I like about that, though? It's it's It could be like science or something else. Yeah. So it could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be traditional uh, religion. It could be something completely weird, like where you're some technology or something, which is cool. That's true. I never want to be alone, and I have a companion derpy doberman ai this all kind of like fits <laughs> you know what uh, i like too the looks you have bags and pockets everywhere but nothing important in them like that not only fits your asteroid archaeologist kind of uh background but also maybe you 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 collect these things because you maybe i don't know i'm just spitballing but there's some significance to what you carry so you don't feel alone you know hmm. i don't know yeah I just carry a bunch of like shitty rocks, space rocks. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Or artifacts, you know? You're an archaeologist, so you could have be important, weird. Yeah, it's another thing. Um, because <laughs> there's no really set defined races in this, everything is just whatever. Again, it's a very open uh, setting. Uh, so, yeah, you could have weird artifacts in that and then weave that into some kind of story. Like, like I'm not going to say. Oh, you don't have this thing in your pocket or whatever, you know. Like if it if it feels cool for the narrative, or you're talking to somebody and you're like, you pull it out and you use that. That's cool. I think that's cool, like game wise. So, can I keep AI dog treats in there? Sure. Why not? Holographic dog treats. <laughs> so does this Doberman look just like a Doberman, or is there something about it that that you can tell that it's it's not quite real it's just an ai because um, remember like, like go ahead i'd say it's like a silver Doberman. oh like, shit you know those, like so. dog robots <laughs> it's like a big one of them got it but probably because this world is like decayed and falling apart it's probably not like the silver surfer yeah it can be like a little rusted yeah rusted maybe like one of the ears is kind of broken or something like a notch or something yeah, yeah been through it okay cool well um 
ladies and gentlemen, those are our characters. Um, when we come back from break, I think it's a good time to take a break. Uh, we're going to get into creating um, our hub, which is a, a very unique thing to Death in Space. We're not just done creating characters. We got um, some kind of vehicle or location that is going to uh, belong to these characters. It's sort of their home base. It's how they get uh, from point A to point B in, these, in, the, in the Tenebra system. So uh, hang out uh, to see how those mechanics work, and then we'll get a little bit more into rules after that. So... Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you guys in about 10 minutes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our Death in Space Zero Session at the Adventure Archive. Thanks for hanging out during the break. We just created characters, so that's it. No, it's not it. We got to move on to hub creation next. Uh, so what a hub is, let me uh, switch to the PDF so you guys can check it out. Oh man, did the music stop? The music stopped, that can't be good. All right, there we go. Music is back. All right, so let me bring the PDF up here. Boom, okay, so hub creation so what this is, it is, as it says here, is your home, your sanctuary in a tough universe. The crew starts with a station or spacecraft. So that is the question I need to ask you guys. Do you want a, uh, a station or a spacecraft? So a spacecraft, like it says here, it's pretty much facilitates uh, space exploration. Whereas something like a hub, it's more about social interactions and intrigue. So it might be like, you know, stuck on the Iron Ring or a moon colony somewhere. It's a small base. If I had to guess, I would assume you guys would want a ship, but that is up to you guys. I mean, I'm leaning ship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, who doesn't want to explore also, space, right? Like You got to. You're in space. Explore yeah, it. Explore it. Mm -hmm. Quick but side I, note. Yeah. So that? to keep to keep really harping on like how cool the layout is, the color coding of every chapter. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, Beautiful. This is a really nicely designed book. I'm. It's got to win some Annies or something, right? At it's some got point. to. It's got to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so um, it sounds like you guys want to do a uh, a ship. So there we go. Uh, and all of these ships and stations, they are powered. So they have what's called an, uh, an output power, which limits uh, the number of additional modules the hub can support. So you can upgrade these, these ships, which is really cool. Um, and so for you guys, uh, we need to first select, oh yeah, before I begin to, there's all hubs are equipped with a set of core functions. They do not cost any output power. So you have a command center, Crew quarters, life support, and a mess. So it's all standard stuff. And let us move on to the hub type and frame statistics. <clears throat> so you guys already chose it. You guys want a spacecraft. Um, so I think I need to make you guys actually in Foundry a... Oh, we got a raid. Welcome, everybody. It's weird I didn't hear a sound effect. Maybe there's no sound effects for this one. I don't think there are on this one. Got it. Well, hey, welcome to the stream, everybody. We are going through our Death in Space uh, Zero session. So both Ryan and, I, Ryan and I backed this Kickstarter way back when. And so we are lucky enough to have the uh, free release, the, the Kickstarter release stuff. So we got the rule books. We got the, got the cool t-shirts. Um, but yeah, highly, highly encourage you guys to pre-order this. If you've never heard of it, go to deathinspace.com. It's a really cool, just unique game. Uh, it can kind of kind of parallel to Mark Borg in a way, but just a different different flavor, different rule set. But anyway, thank you for the raid and uh, stick around. We are we've already created characters, and we are moving on to <coughs> hub creation, which is a spacecraft or a station. The players have decided they want a spacecraft, so they can explore the uh, far reaches of space or die trying, I guess. So let's move on. Um, oh yeah, I need to create a, I believe I need to create an actor for you guys and it is a spacecraft. You guys can name this whatever you want too. So yeah, there's a hub 
great new actor. And I will give all of you guys ownership to it. All players owner. So you guys should be able to click. I'll just drag it into the into the window so you guys can see it. Uh, it has its own character sheet. So you guys can all fill it out as you go, as we go through the creation here. But uh, the first thing you guys need to fill out is the uh, defense rating, which is 11. The max condition is five. So what a condition is, is that is uh, essentially uh, kind of how much, oh no, no, it's not the damage. It's like, um, I think the frame, what is it? What's the damage run? Remind me, it's the frame. Uh... Uh, there's a couple different things you can have the damage, I think, because the frame damage is different than your other type of damage. Correct, yeah. Because the frame damage are just like regen, but the other damage does not. Oh, that's right. Fuel capacity is the maximum amount of fuel that can be carried, and then the frame integrity tracks the damage of the spacecraft. It's 100 percent for an unarmed, unharmed spacecraft. So you guys will see all of this information in the. Uh... Dang, McGlintlock, you did. If you watch this later, you did an amazing job on these character sheets. Dang. You got everything in there. The frame integrity is 100 percent. You have all of the modules you can add in there. This is awesome. Did you see we have access to the, yeah. to the character sheet? Exactly. Out? So I just dropped it on the uh I dropped it onto the um the map. So you guys should see you're just hovering over it. Oh the this one. Oh yeah. there it is. Boom. Yeah, so you there guys can open it up and start filling this out. So um So your condition is already at five, your fuel is at six, and your your DR is 11. And spacecraft for number two, your power source and output. So we need to note that down. It's standard chemical engine, slow, output power of three. And then so, so you guys can only have a crap. maximum of three additional modules. That's what that dictates. I think you can change it. Yeah, so you can you can modify or upgrade the power source or exchange it for another type. The output power can be increased. I am unable to alter the sheet. Really? No. I made you guys owners. That's weird. Let me see. Like I can click in frame integrity, but I can't like change defense score or anything like that. Can you, uh, you can probably just drag spacecraft over and it'll just uh, put out, put a lot of this stuff in too. Or if. Try it now. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, let me see hub. No, those are hub modules, hub tech. So wait, it is drag spacecraft over hub creation. Oh, we can just do the hub creation. Oh, no, oh step like by step in the, uh, in the in the system. But there's no way I, I'm on that. Oh, you just hit the roll table and it and it and it will go in. But that's just names, quirks, uh, backgrounds, right? Uh, and spacecraft backgrounds. But I can't. I can't. Are right. you able to change the defense rating? Uh, yeah, I changed the. So let, I can do it then. If you guys can't, that's weird though. Maybe so, like I said, maybe it's automatic when we put spacecraft into it because this just says hub. Oh no, you put spacecraft. So you guys are at a hundred percent. Defense rating is eleven. Oh wait, I can't edit. I can't enter eleven. That's weird. We'll figure that out later. So uh, fuel condition is that all accurate for you guys? I see condition three. So your uh, fuel capacity is six. Why can't I enter that? That's weird. Right? Yeah. Again, again, maybe it's just like a drag drop oh, situation. Oh wait. Yeah. Anyway, we can figure this out off stream. We will move on to. Uh, we can just talk through stuff and roll stuff down, make notes of it. So let's talk about the background. So the, the hub gap background for your spacecraft, it had a different purpose before you got hold of it. Why don't you guys roll, somebody roll me a D20 and let's see what that purpose was. 
Jess, you want to do, we'll just go like you do one, I'll do one. I think there's three. It's background appearance and quirk. So if you want to do first one, I'll do second one, Ducky, you do third one. All right. So 17, uh, for as long as anyone can remember, that's the spacecraft has been docked to the Iron Ring and the home of an old group of punks who were recently forcibly removed. Cool. Right? <laughs> Get these spiky-haired hippies the fuck out of here. Nice. Okay, so we'll move on. That is the, uh, oh, that's a station. The Hub Quirk. So, Ryan, why don't you roll me a d20 if you're going to do the quirk. This is something that is a bit strange or annoying on the spacecraft. It's going to give us some color. Let me copy-paste that over to the other one so we don't lose it. Or okay. That was the background, right? That was the background. Now you guys are on the quirk. So let's see what you get on a d20. <clears throat> you guys will have to name your spacecraft too which is cool so you got a 13 some kind of signal is emitted by the communication system and over the speakers with a certain periodicity okay so it's just kind of like very some... annoying beep yeah <laughs> basically yeah interesting Man, look at Eleven's cool. A trans-dimensional presence has always been living here. It seems helpful. A lot of them are really cool. What was the other one that's really good? Seventeen is funny. The grumpy robot dog. Oh, a robotic pet coated in a cozy synthetic <laughs> fur. Yeah. Okay. So, well, that's it. Oh, number one. Number one. Body parts and strange objects appear occasionally from tiny yeah, temporary wormholes. Wormholes. That's cool. Was there not like an appearance roll table? No, there's only uh there was only the two, I guess. Sorry. Do you want to do a roll off with Ducky and then if you win we oh, keep it? Oh, for yeah. If you you win we keep it and if uh he wins Why doesn't Ducky just roll on the quirk and we'll just pick the the best one? Okay. Oh, okay. So why don't you roll uh, a d20 Ducky and let's see what uh what quirk this thing has. 3. 3. Small deep space creatures live on the hull. So like those things that ride on sharks, basically. <laughs> the equivalent. So what do you guys want? Do you want uh, a weird signal coming through the speakers periodically? Or um, do you want weird creatures that just hitch a ride on the, on the hull of this thing? You guess. It's really just kind of a flavor thing. Um, I mean, I guess I could see conceivably how some of this could come into play in the game. Both both of them, actually. Like, what if that sound is something? I'm down for either. Flip a coin? Yes. Yeah, someone roll a D2. So Ryan's will be one, then Duck Heels will be two, and we'll see what we got. All right, where did you Signal. get these cool like? You got some crazy like dice graphics. Uh, it was in the uh, dice customization. Okay. I don't know how to get there again. It just popped up the first time I loaded up Foundry. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can get back. All right, so we have our spacecraft. So we've done character creation. We've done uh, hub creation. Now it's time to talk about, I guess, just some general rules. We'll do a brief overview. Unless you guys, do you guys want to talk about characters, hubs, any questions about anything? Uh, I mean, I know I, I read it. Yeah, you've already read the book. Questions yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Jess? Oh. Or, no? Okay. Oh, I found it. What'd you, what were you looking for? The way to just drop the uh, the info into oh in the founder. There it is. All right, there you go. That's all good. Yeah, I found it under frames and just dropped the spacecraft on. So now the hub data should all be good. DR eleven, fuel six, condition except five. Got it. Yeah, condition five, fuel capacity six, output power three. Yeah, there we go. That's all in there now. 
All right, we'll do uh, some brief uh, overview of the rules here. So ability checks, like I said, this is a D20, D20 system. So you're just gonna roll a D20 and then add your modifier to it. That should all be taken care of in your character sheet. This is not player facing, so I will be rolling for um, any kind of combatants or contested rolls or anything like that from a, from an NPC. Um, and then, uh, yeah, basically standard difficulty rating is 12. So if it's uh, equal to or higher, you succeed, otherwise you fail. The cool thing is, though, is once you do fail, you get what's called a void point, and we'll uh, we'll get on to that uh, when that talks about it. And I think on the next page. So opposed rolls are, are pretty obvious. It's basically one of you guys rolls, NPC rolls, or two PCs roll, whatever it may be, and then whoever is uh, the higher high, highest result wins. And then if it's a tie, though, the initiator or most active part wins. So that's kind of interesting thing has standard advantage and disadvantage so from 5e you guys know how that works just 2d20 and you pick the best result um we already know about item slots uh the um consequence of over carrying stuff uh more than uh 12 plus your body it yields disadvantage on all actions so not just i, I like that because it's it's everything it's not just oh your decks or whatever or your, your movement is less it's like Everything you do is gonna have disadvantage. Um, or maybe it's just body. Nah, never mind. Okay, so reactions, this is pretty common with, with OSR stuff. This is for me though, where you know, I'll roll and see how people might react to you if their um, their intentions are un intentions are unclear. So here we go. Void void points, this is a very unique part of death in space. And the way it works is every time you fail an ability check or an attack roll, you gain a vo void point. You can only have up to four void points. And actually what I did is I um, added that. That should be a visible attribute on your token when we start getting into that. Uh, hopefully it, it shows up in play, we'll see. I, I, I ticked it, I basically I ticked your health bar and your void points, so hopefully those numbers show up. Otherwise, we'll just have to refer to your character sheet. But anyway, you can use these void points as you accumulate them. So it's kind of cool because, you know, when you fail a roll, you fail an attack roll, you fail an ability check, you get, they're like, hey, here's a here's a little a consolidation prize. So, um, but the way you use them is you gain an advantage on ability check to an, an attack roll. Or you can activate a cosmic mutation. Um, and what a cosmic mutation is, it's a physical manifestation of the void through the player characters. Uh, so you can get these a couple ways. We, we learned that uh, you could get that through a starting bonus, which two of you guys got, but you didn't roll that. Um, as an advancement, so we'll talk about advancement as well. It's kind of unique in this game. Uh, and in a rare situations, uh, when the void is let loose. So um, when you're activating a mutation, it requires spending one or more, more void points. And the effect is going to last for 10 minutes and can be activated from a range of 10 meters unless i decide otherwise um and then more points can result in a bigger effect the player or referee can agree on something so you know if you guys have some kind of cosmic mutation you want to use and you want to like just buff the shit out of it we can talk about it and see if that you know if that's if that's fair and then that'll happen um but here's the problem um Let's see, uh, da, 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 da. when you avoid corruption. So when you sport, when you spend a void point, so uh, for advantage. So when you use a void point, you're like, I want advantage on this next roll. But if you fail that roll, you roll a 1d6. And if the result is equal to or lower, lower than the current amount of void points after the spend, roll a void corruption effect. So if you have four void points and you decide to use one for advantage, the odds of you getting um, that roll is higher. So, uh, and then you cannot gain a void point <laughs> for the failed roll. So here's a here's a roll table of void corruption. Uh, I won't go too in depth with it, but you guys can check it out. You guys have the PDF. Good time. They're and fun. Then, I think the one the one I rolled is I grow an extra set of teeth. He just starts to layer rows of teeth like sharks. Yeah. That'd be good for you. 
Yeah. But the um but the the cosmic mutation only lasts like ten minutes, right? And the void corruption is permanent. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. permanent scarps. Yeah, exactly. So cosmic mutation is definitely and I believe they have like how much it costs, right, on the table. So the cosmic mutations. mutations. Uh, no, they're all they're all they're all just they're all one. The same cost. Okay. Yeah. So they, I think it said in there that like uh, you can, if you want to spend more than one point for something, you, you can basically like... have a conversation with the GM about like how right. can I, what if I also did this? What if? You know. Yeah. So you guys, when you have these void points, you can either use them for advantage. Uh, however, keep in mind that if you fail. When doing that, you gain void corruption, or you can activate a cosmic mutation. So, essentially, it's like a <clears throat> a, separate, a power. It's like another power you guys have. It's almost like um, I don't know, kind of like cool omen powers. <clears throat> so they're not class specific. You guys can uh, you do have to roll though, I guess, right? It's not uh, it's not something you get to pick, which makes sense. It's just something that happens, right? The void is corrupting you. <clears throat> And gives you some kind of ability. So that is that. Um, here's some other ones. Dang, there's a ton of them. <clears throat> so conditions. Uh, I think the parts. second table is, yeah. What's yeah, up? It's, it's, it's a 20 and a 20. They just weirdly put like 1 through 7 on one page and like 8 through 20 on the next page. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's a d20 you're going to roll every time. Interesting. I like too how it can be activated from a distance too. So if it's something that, you know, you want to like, I don't know, I, I haven't read, I haven't even read this list. So, all right. So condition and spare parts. So, um, not all items have conditions. They will be listed in the, uh, in the item list if they do. Um, and that's because like it says, everything's falling apart They're they're patched up, fixed or repurposed beyond recognition. Um, and they all have condition value. <clears throat> and that is like directly related to how technic technically sophisticated the object is. And so right here's a list. Weapons and electronics have a value in the range of 1 to 5. Spacecraft, 5 to 12. Um, other objects have no conditional value. So you may have plenty of items that have no condition value, which is fine. Because there's, um, there's rules around the condition. So... Um, Anytime an object, uh, including a spacecraft, is using a stressful, stressful situation outside of combat, right? So that's a key thing outside of combat. Um, you roll a d6, and on a one, the object's condition is reduced by one. So the way I imagine this is like, say you're floating through space in your spacecraft, and you're trying to like dock onto some derelict spacecraft, maybe. That could be somewhat risky, so maybe you would, um, in that case, you'd roll like a savvy to to pilot this craft and if you fail you may roll a 1d6 and if you roll a 1 your ship might lose condition so situations like that um, but any object really so anything uh, and then that does apply also to combat but that happens all of that stuff is added up not during combat but after combat so you can break objects obviously if you uh, the condition is zero it is broken and cannot be used until repaired um, and repairs, I believe, just takes time, if I remember correctly. Time or money. Uh, it's not really like a mechanic. And parts. And parts, yeah. So spare parts, uh, yeah, here we go. Used for repairs and divided into categories, components. So you guys can like disassemble things. So if you find like a pistol or something, you can, you can get spare parts, stuff like that. Um, so vehicle parts, this is just how much, it, how much space it takes up on your, uh, on your person. So, uh, Regular components uh, count as one item slot and vehicles um, up to five. So, and that, that would be like materials to repair broken spacecraft, etc., etc. So, next up, this is kind of, I won't go into depth on in this, so you guys can check it out, but this is sort of, you know, how you repair with uh, spare parts, how you dismantle things, electronics and weapons, um, as well as vehicles. And then you can see here that um, uh, here is the formula in here. So 1d6 hours for one component. So it's really not like a, it's not like a roll in terms of, oh, you got it. You're going to succeed or fail. You, you're going to do it. It's just going to take time. 
Um, so that's pretty much all this stuff. <laughs> you can also pay for repairs, obviously. And then off-world activities. None of you guys have any EVA suits, right? Yeah, Nuke? those are... <laughs> Yeah, those are. Do I need those... to breathe. Yeah, right. if you guys, yeah, if you guys, if you guys are venturing, you go through an airlock. You're trying to go into space, either you know from a spacecraft or from the Iron Ring or, or somewhere like that. You need an EVA suit, and there's some rules around oxygen right here, which are all conveniently on your character sheet as well. Um, and then for every hour, you just tick it down. So really simple. But I don't know. It's probably going to be a little while till we get into that. Because you guys don't have shit right now. You guys don't really have much of anything. Um, taking damage as well. Uh, rules are there. Heavy, heavy suits uh, give you a defense rating of plus two. Um, but they ca they cost a lot of item slots. Because they're big. And here's, here's one right here. This talks about lack of oxygen. Uh, zero gravity movement. Um, which we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. Uh, space travel. Also, um, there's all rules against that. Again, that's you guys aren't going to deal with that at all in the in the introductory adventure. So we can deal with space travel once we um, do that. But there's like all kinds of stuff. There's there's certain maneuvers. Your you, there's certain things your your hub can do depending on what modules you have. Like if you want to um, aggressively board uh, a vessel, you need certain modules. For example. Um, travel so again you guys are in the tenebra system space is very very vast so um these are these are kind of the uh the uh the times and you know uh, instant weeks months years decades millennia to get from one place to another so maybe uh ducky's character has been around the uh around the tenebra who knows all right what you guys have all been waiting for is combat so combat is um represents 10 seconds not six seconds as we as we're used to knowing so in this game it's about 10 seconds um you can perform an action and move uh, about 15 meters which is pretty far i feel like that's that's a lot farther than most rpgs allow you to move um in a turn. 10 meters a so meter is about 30 15, feet or three 15, feet 15 meters oh so 45 yeah 45, so it's yeah. a little bit longer nice so initiative, this is where things get interesting. So the way initiative works in this game, you do not roll initiative. It has absolutely nothing to do with any ability scores. You, um, whoever uh, initiates the conflict first goes first. So that's how it works. And then the way it works from there is whoever's turn is over gets to choose the next person who goes next. So and this goes back to what I was talking about earlier is um, right here at the bottom. It says this method of determining turn order reinforces the idea of player characters as a crew acting together. So you guys are kind of like strategizing. And so what I was getting at in that regard is that I'll allow a little bit more meta stuff in combat than I think I normally would because that is just kind of one of the tenets of the game is, is you guys need to strategize. You guys have, you guys are a crew with all your unique, abil unique abilities and know how to work together really well. And so um, I just want to make sure that you guys take that into account when you're choosing who goes next in that regard. And so you guys can talk amongst yourselves um, somewhat anyway. But attack, roll, attack rolls are pretty basic. It's a 1d20, like I said. Uh, body is melee. Tech is range. Uh, if it's equal to or greater than the defense rating, successful. Uh, if it's lower, it misses. Uh, risky attacks. So this is another cool aspect to combat. Um, basically, you have to claim you're going to do a, a risky attack. If you're successful, you get to deal an extra damage die. But if you fail, the targeted opponent, uh, opponent gets an immediate counterattack. Uh, in addition to their other uh, attacks and their, or, or their actions in the round. And they also get to choose who goes next. So it's kind of a gamble. But cool that you get to... Uh, Decide that, you know, if you want to say, you know, if, if some guy's really down to his last last hit point and you really want to go in, that's a thing. So critical attacks, um, there it's funny. There's no, like, critical failures in this, which I thought was kind of interesting. There's just a critical success, which is obviously a 20, a natural 20, and you get an extra die damage. Um, 
I was thinking, I, I mean, I can obviously add that, but I feel like uh, this sort of mitigates that question of critical failure of like objects, objects breaking because um, what condition lo loss, how it works is when the dust settles and not with every attack roll, uh, you determine this. So after combat, you roll a 1d6 for each used weapon. So regardless of success, regardless of failure, um, you roll, a, and if you roll a one, it loses one condition. And if the damage rolled in an attack uh, is the maximum possible value, one item carried by the defender loses one condition. So if you get a really good hit in, uh, but the attacker and the attacker gets to choose what item. So again, this is all decided after the fact. So once the dust is settled, um, so you can see this again, it really reinforces the idea that shit's broken. Like it's a very gritty, uh, it's a very gritty setting. Um, nothing is, 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 is running exactly how it should be. Everything's kind of on the brink of collapse, essentially. Um, cover and shields. Uh, so this is pretty much like, it's pretty simplified. I think it's, what is it? Um, I think if you have full cover, you cannot attack. If I remember, what does it say here? Yeah, when firing from cover that can withstand gunfire, such as behind a wall, creators similar, one can choose to be partly or fully covered. So that's up to you, right? It's not up to really, I mean, obviously you can't be fully covered by something that's too small. But um, attacks against a partly covered uh, person has disadvantage. But then a person full cover cannot attack, but you are shielded from everything. So I think that's a really cool, simple way to, to deal with that stuff. Um, Enemies, so like I said, this is not a player-facing role system like like we're used to with Merkborg. I'm going to roll for enemies, and they have just very simplified s stats, as you can see here. Um, same ones as you guys. Uh, and then morale. Again, we all know how morale works. If um, you defeat half of an enemy group, or the lone enemy is half their hit points, or you defeat the leader, roll morale, and we'll see if they surrender, run away, or, or hold their ground. So... That's what that is. Death and healing. So this is a little bit more forgiving, I think, uh, than Merkborg, than what you guys are used to. Um, so it's zero or less, because in Merkborg it was, <laughs> you know, to have any chance of surviving, it had to be exactly zero, otherwise you're just dead. Um, so you need to roll a body check, um, and you can spend void points for advantage as well. And if you succeed, you're stabilized, but unconscious while well, until resting. Um, and if the check fails, you're dead. So you get like one, one shot pretty much. But what's cool is you can use void points. So you can potentially get advantage on that if you'd like to, to risk it. Um, and then there's this interesting table at the end. Um, oh, here's the, here's the healing. Before we get into that, let's talk about healing. So when you have eaten something and rested a full night, you get 1d8 plus body. So there are no short rests in this game. There's nothing. Um, it's it's later, literally overnight. You got to have food. Um, and you regain uh, 1d8 plus 8 plus body. And it looks like it's got to be in a, in, a, in a safe space too. Hub or a uh, calm space dock. Oh, no, no, sorry. If you rest in a safe place, all hit points are regained. But anyway, back to death in space here. Uh, this was not... How you were meant to leave this universe at the last drops of life, leave your body, you have a final vision accompanied by deafening static. So when you die, you roll on this table. And it's it's just kind of this vision. I don't know, it's just kind of like a flavor thing, I guess. Um, like a true death? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's what you see your true death. So this is a, another uh, fun roll table, I guess. Again, flavor, nothing mechanical there. I'm not going to get into space confrontations. Um, this just sort of outlines distances, what you it's can do. It's basically exactly the same mechanically. That's one thing we noticed when we were going over it. Like the space combat is literally just the same combat in space as opposed to like a different system like Orbital Blues that does yeah. it like a little bit differently. I think so. you act as a group though, right? Isn't that right? Yeah, and and the different people have to use like the pilot, like a person has to make like a pilot, like a savvy check to do stuff. So I guess Jess is probably going to be our pilot realistically because yeah. piloting is savvy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But yeah, we'll, we'll deal with those rules when we get to them. If you guys ever get to them, we'll see. Advancement. I think this is probably the last thing we'll talk about tonight. 
um, which is advancement. So this is kind of cool. This reminds me of Tales from the Loop, where uh, you kind of ask a series of questions to the players, and for every question they answer yes to, they get an experience point. So again, this really encourages like you to participate <laughs> uh, in the game. Uh, but what the way it works is, you know, did you repair something? Did you deliver a dangerous contract? Did you use at least one void point? Did you discover a new and potentially dangerous place? Did you gain a new enemy? Did you find someone new that you can trust? Did you contribute with something uh, especially memorable? So those are the things. Uh, you get one point for one of those questions. You answer affirmative. And then you can spend these things. So this is how improvement works. Um, five XP, you can increase one ab ability by one, raising it to at most plus one, which is kind of cool. So they put a cap on it as, as high as you can go on your ability. So if any, does any of you have, I think Ducky, you have like a plus two dexterity. Yeah. Okay. So you basically have a higher dexterity than anyone can ever have, I guess. Um, oh no, no, wait, wait. Increase ability by one raising the plus two or higher. So it just, okay, it just and costs more as you get higher. You can gain a cosmic mutation, um, additional origin benefit. Oh, that's cool. You can have a most two. So you can actually split your origins. That's interesting. I guess, right? Or maybe- uh, No, you get an origin benefit. You get the second- You just get the second the one? Oh, okay. Yeah. And that is death in space. So, um, I won't get any of the extras because we're going to be playing the extras. So uh, next week, we are going to kick off um, Welcome to the Ring, which is the introductory adventure in the uh, core rulebook. So um, if any of you out there have this book and you don't want to be spoiled, don't read uh, any further, I guess. I mean, there's some tables and stuff at the end, but um, the adventure, I believe, comes right up next. So that's it. Hopefully you guys uh, got a... Decent overview of the system. If you didn't already check out uh, Weekly Scroll, I highly suggest you check that one out because they go into far more detail about the stuff. Um, but yeah, we got our characters. Um, they're going to start their first mission next Thursday at 7 p.m. So uh, yeah, join us then. Uh, I guess that's it. Any more announcements? Anything we got to talk about? I know we decided, well, obviously, Weekly Scrolls on Sunday. And then I think yeah. DK is Monday, right? We're doing it like a Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're doing we're doing um the episode this week is gonna be uh open arms on Sunday, which is from the same people that did uh Red Giant. I think it's basically the exact same game system. It's just set in kind of like a JoJo's bizarre adventure like anime world instead of like a dying world. So We'll see how that uh, uh, changes. And then, yeah, we decided Monday our, our two and a half year campaign has ended. So uh, we are going to do kind of a round table post campaign discussion. I'll talk about things that you guys like could have done differently or information NPCs could have given you if you didn't murder them immediately or like, you know, with some <laughs> of the boss combats and stuff, how things could have gone differently. Some mistakes that I made along the way. Um, uh, and then reread and was like, well, fuck. Uh, so yeah, it'll be a good time. We're going to bring everybody on. Um, uh, Cam said he will be there. Oh, um, cool. So we can talk about, yeah. And um, we'll need another well, Cam uh, said window, that he'd be, right? he'd be available. We'll need I, I figure we'll window. probably just do like a, a big. Oh, right. We don't need the, the regular one. Yeah, we can right. basically just like screencast like this, the thing. We'll just put our names on the bottom. Um, and then uh, Janelle, I don't know if she's going to be able to be there or not, but she was. I mean, obviously, she's part of the Adventure Archive. She's been a huge supporter of us, like both locally and 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 in the stream for a very long time. She runs our website, Josh Point website, and does a really amazing job with that. And she played Selvin in the Dark Kingdoms, mm -hmm. so she'll be there as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll be a really good time. And then I I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'll decide in the next next couple of weeks what I'm gonna start you running. Make a, on you should make a roll table for all the games you want to run and just do it that way. Should. You should probably around. have at least i have four to six and and we'll see um it might it might also decide on how how long the game is and stuff like that because i'm really leaning into nova right now or okay. tomb so we'll we'll see how that goes but that's what's coming up is just yeah uh weekly scroll on sunday dk on monday and then we're back here on thursday cool all right well uh again thank you mcglintlock for the foundry system it's going to make our lives a lot easier thank you for the death in space guys if you guys are ever listening for allowing us to use this amazing soundtrack on stream it is very fitting 
Um, and obviously, thank you to the people who composed it, Helium Kid Cannon and Solar Fields. So we're going to go to our um, thank you screen for those of you who hung out. We got any, I don't know if we have any lists or not, but anyway, we're going to visit there. Uh, and we're going to go for a raid. Is there anybody we should raid? Uh, I am looking for that right now, so uh -huh. I will find someone and we will be doing that. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fully prepared for uh, rules to be fumbled next week, but it's going to be a learning experience for sure. I think learning any kind of new system is going to be a little bit rough, but we'll get it. We'll get it. Luckily, it's a simple system in the uh in the in the tradition of osr so but I, I think the the one thing out there that's going to be very different is again this is not a combat focused game there is combat in it but and you can play it as a combat focused game but uh at its heart it's it's not really that which i i thought was it was kind of surprising because you know in the world of rpgs particularly with 5e and, and the influences uh that it has everybody just wants to fight 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 so It'll be interesting to see um, how this adventure plays out, this scenario, because it is you, there's potentially combat in it, but it's it's very different. So, but I think it's fitting for an introductory adventure. Uh, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how you guys go. And remember, it's a collaborative setting. It's a collaborative universe. So uh, I may be asking you guys questions to help develop this thing as we go. So, did we find a? Uh, did, yeah. raid? Good awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We know zero sessions maybe aren't the funnest thing to watch, but hopefully you got something out of it. And we will be uh, playing uh, Welcome to the Ring, the introductory adventure for Death in Space next Thursday at 7 o'clock Pacific time. So have a great night, everybody, and we will see you next time.